Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Bulk Gun. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to paint Neve Black Talon. So the first colour that we're going to be using is Vallejo Black. It's just going to be to do all the joints between the arms and some of the smaller pieces of equipment. Like on the hip there and also the hair of Neve Black Talon. The next colour they're going to use is Vallejo Burnt Umber. I'm going to use this as the base colour for the cloak. And one thing I will say is that it is a bit of a pain painting this colour over the top of the gold, so you will have to give it two coats. It's not very often I have a problem with painting over the metallics, but every now and again if you get like this kind of textured surface, or the paint's not quite as thick or well mixed maybe, it may show through a little bit, so just give it a second coat to smooth that coat over and you'll be able to carry on with it like that. Next colour we're using is Citadel Mephiston Red. I'm going to be doing the handles on both of the axes with this. like so. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo White, that's to do the kind of diamond shape on the little emblem there and also the inside of the cloak and the little lightning symbols that are hanging off like little badges. White of the cloak is the main thing here because it is quite a big area. Also because of the way white usually is, you may have to do a couple of little coats on that just to get it smooth. There's also a little bit of the cloak on the far side that you'll need to paint white too. Next up, it's Citadel Cantor Blue. We're just going to use this to do the little bits of leather which are hanging down over the groin and around the back too. And also you've got a little blue part around that white diamond that we painted previously. It's the first Stormcast I've painted in a while. I do really enjoy painting them. I've been painting them, not making videos or posts about them, but painting a lot of Liberators up and a few different ones. Probably going to be a few Stormcast videos coming up in the next few months. Next up we're using Vallejo Flesh Base, that's just to do the skin on the face. Now her skin is a lot paler on the actual picture, and the actual official figure, but I just like this colour as a skin tone. And I like it as a paint as well, the paint's a really really nice smooth paint. So depending on what skin tone you're using, just paint it up with that and get a nice smooth layer on there. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. It's a great colour we're going to be using for the axe blades and also parts of the haft of the axe. So any particular Stormcast characters or anything like that that you want to see painted up or Stormcast models, let me know because I've got quite a few there waiting to go. I think it's the Lord Relictor or Knight Relictor or something like that that I've got one of them quite looking forward to painting up. There's quite a few of them, so if there's any you want to see, just shout out. Next up, it's Citadel Ricard Flesh. I've just used that to paint this part here and the camera didn't record it. So next up we're going to be using Vallejo Beige Brown, 
the inside of the paws which are hanging from the cloak. You can see the previous bit of the car flesh there, just the rune coloured writing, or ribbon rather, that hangs down over the left hand shoulder, over that cloak. That's all you use the Ricard flesh for. The beige brown is a nice colour to do these paws in. Just give that a good coat. Now it's time for the shade, starting with Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. I'm going to be using this on all of the gold and also all of the cloak. I've said that a hundred times, like adding these shades to the miniatures really does bring life out of them. Shows all the details and the contours and the little ridges and things like that in the armour. I really do like adding the shades to the model. Next up, we're going to be using Citadel Nuln Oil. I'm going to use this on all the silvery coloured metallics. See me reaching behind there? There is like a... I can't remember the name of the weapon itself, but like the kind of crossbow thing hanging off her back behind the cloak. So you want to try and get that as best you can. Maybe worth painting it before you put it together. For the skin, we're going to use Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade. Just going to give that a quick coat of that to get the details out. And once you put that on, that should all be fine. Like so. Now we're using a little bit of Citadel Seraphim Sepia. We're just going to go over the area where we use the Ricard Flesh. Ensuring that you get down all the sides and on the underside as well, like so. Next shade is going to be Citadel Drucci Violet. I'm going to use that on both the red hafts of the axes. like so. Next shade that we're going to use is Citadel Drachenhof Nightshade. We're going to use this on all the areas that we use Cantor Blue on. So all these leather straps at the front and a little bit around the white diamond on the left shoulder. Next one is going to be Vallejo Game Colour Wash, and it's pale grey. I'm just going to use this to shade the inside of the cloak. Now it is a really pale grey this one, so you do want to use quite a bit of it in there, just to give it that nice darker shading in the creases as they run down from the shoulders. A little bit on each side there. Not too much though. Return to the colours now using Citadel Retributor Armour. And the aim of this is we're going to be trying to highlight all the areas of the gold where the light would be catching it, whilst leaving the Retributor Armour in the shades where you're not going to be getting light catching the gold. So you kind of look at where the light is catching the armour while I'm painting it here. These are the bits that I'm going to be trying to highlight with the Retributor Armour. We're doing quite a lot of the model with this, then using the lighter colour gold to highlight. So you can see where the Retributor armour is now, and we're going to move on to Citadel Liberator Gold. We're going to be trying to highlight all these areas where you can see the light catching it, so down the thigh, across the waist and the chest, onto the decorations and the forearms. And when you turn the model around there, you can see the light still catching the top, the leg here, and these parts top of the foot and then the back of this leg here so as you turn the model you can see the highlight on the inside of that thigh there the left thigh 
So these are bits we're going to be trying to highlight with the Liberator Gold. And the reason we do that is that when it's stood in whatever light it is, it still looks like the light is catching the gold itself. We'll come back once all of that's finished and start with the next highlight. So now we've added a little bit of Vallejo Modeler Chrome to the Liberator Gold and we're just going to highlight all these areas that we've just painted. Now it is going to be an extreme highlight, so you want to be doing the edges and a very very thin strip where the reflections are. So you can see there's not a lot of this highlight going on. I apologise for the noise, one of the cats is faffing around by my feet here. like so. So with the gold finished we're now going to move on to the face. So we're going to return to Vallejo Flesh Base, one of the Panzer Aces colours. We're going to put the base colour back on, making sure that we leave plenty of the Reichland Flesh Shade in the recesses. I think with the gold and the face done it's going to be about half the model really. The only big part that you've got to do is both sides of the cloak which isn't too much bother the rest of it's just some little cool details now adding some Vallejo white to the flesh base we're going to do the first layer of highlights now moving on to a army painter wargamer character brush I do like the point that they have on these brushes do find it nice for doing detail work. You can see here that I'm trying to highlight the areas that will be catching the light in the same way that we did the gold. I'm also going to try and do a few little lines on the forehead, leave a few little creases of the brows a little bit furrowed. Now we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and we're going to do another highlight to that. Like so. And finally, we're going to add a little tiny bit of Mechanicus Standard Grey Citadel colour to the flesh colour. We're just going to paint that along the side of the head, as though part of the head's been shaved. I'll be very careful not to get too much on. You just want enough that can be seen and differentiated between the flesh colour. I think we've achieved quite nicely there. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo white. We're going to start doing the eyes. So as always you want a tiny little bit of white on your brush. I'm using the Army Painter Wargamer character brush here. And you want to be going from one side of the eye to the other. Using a downward stroke, dragging a brush away from the point across the eye. Like so. Next up we're just going to use a little bit of Vallejo black. And you want to try to be getting the points of the eyes so looking pretty much straight ahead if you do the eyes and you're not happy just return to them keep doing the pupils until you're happy next up we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo German grey I'm going to use this to highlight all the areas that we painted chaos black earlier so the joints between the armour the little pouch on the leg and the belt. There's a great colour this German grey, it's so dark that it makes a very nice 
highlights the black without being too visible and without being too dark that you can't see it, it's just enough. Now we're going to move on to using a little bit of Mechanica Standard Grey. This is just going to be to highlight the areas that we've just used the German Grey on. So the hair and all the joints in the armour. There's actually loads of detail on this hair. There's little plaits running through it. There's hair twisting around itself and all that kind of thing. It is really, really good. As always, it's another Stormcast model that I've really, really enjoyed painting. Next up, we're going to work on the cloak. So we're going to start reapplying some Vallejo Burnt Umber to it. Now I've started off doing individual tufts on the fur and highlighting each one of them individually. But as it goes on with the layers, I start realising that I haven't really paid attention and lost track of where I'm up to doing the highlights. So we end up doing a little bit of a light dry brush across the back, which actually brings out the colour a lot nicer. So if you want to dry brush this colour on rather than paint individual ones, it works just as well, I think, and you're less likely to lose track of where you're up to. Now we've added a little bit of Citadel Ricard Flesh to the Burnt Umber. We're just going to start highlighting that. Now the areas we want to get a bit lighter are the edges of the cloak and also the peaks of the two ridges where the cloak's got that kind of ruffle in the middle. So I'm trying to highlight all these individual hairs around the edges. I think part of it may have been that the lamp that I'm using is quite bright, so when you're painting it, it is easy to see reflections as areas that you've painted, and then when you move it away, you haven't done. So the light reflecting off the fur itself. So now we're going to use a little bit more Ricard Flesh in that mix. I'm just going to start highlighting the little tiny bits of fur, giving them a little bit more of a highlight on the edge of each of the tufts. Again, we're going around the edge here again. We're also going to work our way up these ridges on the cloak. Like so. Once you've got these done, you can see it now. It's not looking as good as I would have liked here. So I'm going to try one more highlight. Now we're going for some simple dry brushing instead because it works a lot better on this cloak. On cloaks like um, a Baden's where it's more like the triangles of fur and bigger tufts, you can paint it like this really, really easy. But started doing this when the tufts are a lot finer and I don't think it looks as good as it should do when it's like this. So after this layer, we're just going to get an older brush out and we're going to give it a bit of dry brush with the colour that we're using now. Okay, so you can see now the cloak, and it's not looking too hot, it's not looking too highlighted. So what we're going to do is use an older brush and use the same mix that we've just used. I'm just going to go along here and lightly dry brush that colour on across the ridges and across the top of the shoulders there, and down the edges that we were highlighting originally. In this case, this is a far better way of doing it, I think. The cloak is fine enough that it works okay. So now we've added a little bit more Ricard Flesh to the previous mix. We're just going to do one final highlight, dry brush across the top there. Like so. And that looks a lot better than it did. So next up, we're going to be using Citadel Ricard Flesh, and we're going to work on the little parchment with the runes on there. Just going to reapply this. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit streaky or anything like that when you're putting it on. Just as long as you leave the sepia in the recesses, and you get the main flat area of this back to Ricard Flesh.
like so. Now we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo white to the Ricard flesh and we're going to just add a first layer of highlights on this. So thinking about the light coming down from the top, you want to be highlighting the top edges of everything. Like so. Just going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. Do a little bit more highlighting on that. Like so. And as a final highlight, we're just going to use a tiny little bit of Vallejo white just to go around the very edges of the parchment. Like so. Keeping with Vallejo white, we're now going to work on the cloak. We're just going to use this to reapply the white to the cloak. Now because the white sometimes goes on a little bit streaky, you can use this to your advantage here. So you want to be putting it on the raised areas and the areas that are out in the open. So you get a nice smooth white on that. But the way it streaks and the way it leaves some of the below colour showing through. If you just feather the white into that area, it blends it in quite nicely for you with minimal effort. And it'll give you a nice little... Contrast between the plain white fading into the grey. With the white out of the way, we're now going to move on to Citadel Cantor Blue and reapply that to the little emblem here and also to the leather straps on the groin area. Now we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo white to the Cantor blue and we're going to do a little highlight on these straps. Keep referring to them as straps, they're actually called lappets or lappets, L-A-P-P-E-T-S. If you refer to them as straps, just bear with me. Adding a little bit more white to it now, we're going to do one final highlight with the blue. Mix that with the previous mix and just do one final highlight on the lappets. Apologies for this bit being a little bit out of focus there. That's the finished lappets. Next up, we're going to be using Vallejo Model Air Chrome. We're going to be reapplying that to some of the blades of the weapons, the little studs, which are on the lapets, and also to the haft parts, the metallic parts of the haft on the axis too. Like so. Now we're working on the hafts, we're going to start with Citadel and Mephisto on red again. We're going to use the Army Painter Wargame Character Brush once more. We're going to be doing all these little raised bits of each strap of leather which is wrapped around the haft to make the grip. We're going to be doing each one of those bits individually, so you're leaving the Druchy Violet in the recesses so you can see each individual strap on there. Nice close up of my thumb in focus there. I 
We're going to add a little bit of Citadel Fire Dragon Bright to the Mephiston Red now. We're going to do one highlight on these bits. You're just going to highlight the edges of these cross bits so they stand out a lot better. Like so. With those bits finished, that is the completed Neve Black Talon. That is a great miniature, it's in a great pose, very dynamic, really good fun to paint, and it will look good in any Stormcast army. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media, link below. Thanks very much.